Yusuke Nomura from Tohoku University, who will be telling us about quantum many body simulations using artificial neural networks. Please. So thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. So my name, uh, first I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me uh, this opportunity to, to present my work. So my name is uh, Yusuke Nomura from Tohoku University. And uh, today I will talk about uh, quantum many body simulations using artificial neural networks. So collaborators are uh, uh, listed here. So actually from April, actually I moved from Keio University uh, to Tohoku University. So now our university is, is located at this Sendai. And we have good food, good sake. So if it, also our group becomes big. Now we have, our group has seven rooms. And in total, we have more than 300 square meters. But now I, the member is only me, actually, only one member for 300 square meters. <laughs> so actually, I, I would like to welcome you to visit our group because we have much enough space. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so in condensed matter physics, so let me start. So in condensed matter physics, uh, the solving uh, quantum many-body problems is a uh, uh, very important topic uh, because materials themselves are quantum many-body systems. Then uh, quantum many-body problems are written like this uh, formula. The formula is very simple. Now we have Hamiltonian, and what we want to do is to uh, obtain the eigenstate and also the eigenvalue of this Hamiltonian. But the problem is that this Hamiltonian is very big. The uh, dimension of the uh, Hilbert space is exponentially large. So if we want to solve this uh, in the quantum, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, the classical devices, so it will take expon exponentially large computational cost. Then uh, what we usually do is to approximate quantum state in some functional form. But in the uh, strongly correlated systems, uh, because various quantum phases compete with each other within a very small energy scale, then uh, in the approximation, if we put bias from some human insight, then it may result in long understanding or a prediction. Uh, this is why I am interested in machine learning or neural network. So by using machine learning or neural network, we may be able to mitigate unnecessary biases in solving quantum many body problems. Okay, so let me uh, go to the detailed topic. So now we uh, talk about three topics. First one and the first two are variational method for zero temperature and the finite temperature method. Uh, finally, we move on to the quantum to classical mapping. Okay, so let me uh, start from the variational method at zero temperature. So again, uh, what we want to solve is this uh, 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 quantum many-body problem. Then the problem is how to uh, approximate this uh, quantum state. Then uh, for simplicity, uh, let us consider the uh, spin one-half quantum spin system. Then uh, what we do in the neural network is to connect the input, input with the spin configurations and the output is the wave function. And uh, in the uh, intermediate step, we put neural network to connect this input and output. Okay, so here this is an example of the restricted Boltzmann machine. So the restricted Boltzmann machine consists of sigma spins, and this correspond to the uh, physical degrees of freedom, and also the hidden spins, and this is the auxiliary degrees of freedom. Then uh, both sigma spins and H spins are uh, Ising spins. Then uh, we define uh, the Boltzmann weight for this extended Ising system uh, based on the uh, magnetic field A and B and the classical interaction W. Then uh, once we define the Boltzmann weight, then uh, if we trace out H degrees of freedom, uh, we obtain the wave function like this. So in this case, uh, if this variational parameters A, uh, W, B are real, then uh, this Boltzmann weight is positive and real, then the resulting wave function is also positive. 
But in the general uh, case, the wave function can be negative or even complex. So in this case, we need to extend the definition of variation of parameters to be complex variable. Okay. So in this setting, the quantum correlations are taken into account by the connection to the uh, hidden degrees of freedom. Also, a good property of the uh, a neural network is that we have a property of universal approximation, meaning that uh, in the limit of infinitely large number of hidden units, uh, we can represent any kind of wave function. <coughs> okay, so we also have, uh, we do not also have uh, interaction among H spins. Then uh, we can analytically trace out H degrees of freedom. Then we can obtain this uh, formula for the wave function. Then uh, by, using, by using this formula, we can efficiently compute the wave function amplitude. Then uh, this wave function amplitude actually depends on the variational parameters A, B, and W. So the problem is how to optimize uh, these variational uh, parameters. So let me show a very simple uh, demonstration using the one-dimensional anti-ferromagnetic Heisenberg model. So if we want to approximate the ground state, because the ground state is the lowest energy uh, state, so then in that case, uh, we can take the energy as a loss function. Then uh, by, mi by minimizing the loss function, we can approximate uh, the ground state. So then what we do is first we put initial uh, variation of parameters using uh, small random numbers then uh, by uh, minimizing the energy or the loss function, then the optimized variational parameters look like this. So here we see that the variational parameters has a sign change between here and here. So it means that RBM uh, land the, uh, land the uh, uh, anti-ferromagnetic correlation in this system. Then the resulting uh, wave function reproduces the uh, exact uh, wave function like this. So here the system size is super small. So now we can, we can compute the wave function amplitude for all the spin configurations. But even when the system size becomes large, uh, we can uh, compute uh, the energy expectation value or energy derivative by using the uh, Monte Carlo technique. Then by, uh, by combining with the Monte Carlo technique, uh, we can apply it to the larger system size. So this is uh, basically the variational uh, method using the uh, neural network. Okay, so this kind of uh, neural network variational method is first introduced by uh, Carolia and Toria uh, in 2017 uh, for the uh, spin systems without frustrations. And since this method is very new, so first we need to do the uh, uh, bar uh, benchmark calculation to check the accuracy of the method. But through various development and the benchmarks, we start to understand uh, that uh, these neural network quantum states are indeed powerful. Then uh, what we should aim for is to apply uh, for a challenging uh, systems for example, frustrated spin systems or fermion systems in which quantum Monte Carlo suffer from the time problem. Okay, then uh, uh, let me start from the extension to the fermion systems. So please uh, refer to uh, this paper if you're interested. So in this case, uh, we apply to the uh, two-dimensional Hubbard model. So the two-dimensional Hubbard model is a very uh, fundamental model that may be uh, important for describing the high TC superconductivity in Q rate. Then uh, our idea is to combine the neural network with the fermion wave function. So here, RBM, uh, here neural network part is based on the RBM and it is combined with the, with the fermion wave functions. Because the fermion wave function is a, a kind of strata determinant, so it is anti-symmetric. So by combining the anti-symmetric wave function and the symmetric wave function, then uh, in total wave function becomes anti-symmetric. So then uh, we can apply to the fermion systems. 
also it is interesting to rewrite the problem like this. So here, uh, in this setting, so we approximate the exact wave function divided by the fermion wave function by the neural network. So it means that if this fermion uh, wave function is sophisticated, then uh, we can easily approximate this quantity by the neural network, okay? So this is indeed the case. So here we show the benchmark study using the eight by eight square lattice at half filling. So here uh, in the half filling case, we can apply the quantum Monte Carlo method without sign problem. So we take the QMC energy as a reference. Then uh, here we show the uh, relative error on the energy of the ground state for the Hubbard model. And here we basically uh, have three curves. So here the RBM is combined with the Fermi C state. So here we combine the RBM with pair product state. And finally we symmetrize the pair product state to be become, uh, to make it more sophisticated. Then uh, we can see that the accuracy of the wave function drastically improves by combining with the sophisticated fermion wave function. Actually, this pair product state is uh, kind of an extension of a Sreta determinant, Sreta determinant, and it is very flexible. For example, using the pair product state, we can represent the superconducting state or the anti-ferromagnetic state. So this result suggests that by uh, incorporating the quantum correlations using the pair product state, then we can help the neural network part. And the good point of this combination is that we can reduce the number of variational parameters to get high accuracy. And actually this is helpful when we want to apply to larger system size. Okay, so <clears throat> then uh, we, move on, we next move on to the application to the uh, frustrated spin systems. So here, uh, our purpose is to go beyond uh, the benchmark and uh, uh, we apply to the challenging uh, frustrated systems and we try to review uh, the physics in the uh, uh, frustrated systems. So here we apply our method to the anti-ferromagnetic J1, J2 Heisenberg model on the square lattice. So the Hamiltonian looks like this. Here, uh, uh, J1 uh, is the nearest neighbor spin interactions, and the J2 is the next neighbor spin interactions. So here, the Hamiltonian is very simple, but because J1 and J2 compete with each other, uh, it gives uh, non-trivial uh, physics. So what we know for this model is that when we fix J1 and change J2, then uh, when J2 is small, uh, we uh, have this kind of nail type long range order. On the other hand, when J2 is large, we have this uh, stripe type phase. But in between these two phases, the frustration effect becomes strong. Then uh, uh, interesting, uh, phase like uh, quantum spin ligate may emerge. But although the Hamiltonian is very simple, but uh, uh, because of this J2 term, uh, we cannot apply the quantum Monte Carlo because of the sign problem. Then uh, uh, for the zero, temperature, uh, the zero temperature phase diagram of this model had not been settled. Then uh, we apply this uh, RBM plus uh, PP wave function uh, to this J1, J2 model. So here, again, we combine the RBM part with the uh, fermion wave function. But here, uh, it is a quantum spin systems, so we need to map onto the subspace of the quantum spin systems. So we, for this purpose, we put the good zero factor here for the pair product state. Then uh, actually this uh, uh, pair product part uh, can represent, for example, the resonating uh, balance bond type wave function. So this uh, pair product part is already powerful answers for the quantum spin systems. 
So by combining the powerful wave functions, we can make the wave function even more powerful. Okay. Also, the quantum state at finite size systems are labeled by the uh, quantum numbers. <laughs> so here we uh, uh, apply the uh, total momentum and the spin, pro uh, spin parity projection to symmetrize the wave function. And actually, a good point of this uh, projection is that we can not only compute the ground state, but also we can compute uh, the excited states. Okay, so in this uh, model, the ground state is total momentum zero and the even parity, uh, spin parity sector. But for example, if we compute the finite momentum state, it corresponds to the excited state. Then uh, we start from the benchmark study. So first we apply uh, to the uh, ground state uh, using the 10 by 10 lattice at J2 equals 0.5. So uh, at the time of 2021, our best, uh, our uh, method uh, gave the best energy among the compared method. Also uh, we compute, uh, uh, the, we check the accuracy of the excited states for the six by six lattice. So here this is a triplet excitation with momentum pi pi. And here this is a singlet excitation with momentum pi zero. And compared to the exact diagonalization result, uh, we see that uh, we can accurately compute the excited state. Okay. So now it is 2024. Now actually uh, uh, the accuracy of the variational method has been improved. So recently by using a kind of transformer uh, method, uh, actually the record of the best energy is kind of updated. And uh, this kind of uh, improvement can be achieved by uh, the, uh, uh, the development of efficient uh, uh, optimization method called MinSR. So if you are interested in, please have a look at this paper. This is very nice, I think. Okay. <clears throat> so then uh, now we can compute the uh, ground state and the excited states uh, in a uh, very accurate way. Then uh, to study the zero temperature phase diagram, uh, we combine the two independent analyses. Uh, one, is one is from the ground state and one is from the excited states. So the ground state analysis is a kind of more conventional way by approximating the ground state. Then uh, we compute the correlation functions. Then by studying the correlation function, we study the property uh, of the quantum phases. So this is kind of conventional. But we can also uh, infer the phase diagram by the uh, excitations. So this is because the, the ground state property and the excitation structure uh, correspond to each other. So this means that if by looking at the change in the excitation structure, then we can uh, uh, study uh, the uh, ground state phase diagram. So what I meant is that here, for example, the excitation structure changes at this point. So here the lowest excitation is triplet in this region but the low exc lowest excitation changes to the singlet. Then uh, by uh, uh, looking at this crossing point and uh, by looking at the system size dependence of this crossing point, then uh, we can uh, estimate the phase boundary at the sub thumb dynamic limit. And actually this crossing point corresponds to the uh, phase boundary between the uh, quantum spin liquid phase and the balanced bond solid phase. So we know that in the balanced bond solid phase, the lowest excitation is singlet. Okay. Okay, then uh, by performing two independent analysis like this, then actually these two independent analysis gave the consistent result then uh, we finally obtain this uh, kind of zero temperature phase diagram. So here we have a nail phase 
and the stripe phase uh, for small J2 and large J2. And uh, in between uh, these two phases, uh, we have a uh, finite region of quantum swing decade and a balance bond solid. And this balance bond solid is a symmetry broken state. But the quantum spin leakage phase is more exotic phase. We do not have any symmetry breaking, and the quantum spins fluctuate even at zero temperature. Now, because uh, we can compute the excitation structure uh, by our method, uh, we study the excitation structure for this uh, quantum spin leakage phase. So actually, in the usual conventional uh, anti-ferromagnet, like a uh, nail type anti-ferromagnet aura, uh, we have a uh, uh, numb Goldstone mode at the ordering vector, pi pi. But in this case, uh, the excitation structure is more exotic because not only zero, zero, and pi pi, but also pi zero and zero pi becomes gap press, and it is predicted to have a Dirac type uh, dispersion. So this kind of uh, unusual uh, excitation structure suggests the existence of fractionalized excitation called spin-on. And also spin-on uh, is predicted to have a uh, Dirac type dispersion like this. So this uh, suggests that this quantum spin liquid is nodal. So our uh, method uh, reviewed the nodal uh, spin liquid with fractionalized spin-ons. Okay, so this is our result. But because uh, this kind of model, this J1, J2 model is a very fundamental model, so other people also study uh, this model. So this is the result by the DMRG, and this is the result by the variation of Monte Carlo method, and this is our method, and this is uh, based on PEPs. So here, uh, there is a, a quantitative discrepancy in the phase boundary, but at least we have a, a kind of qualitative agreement in that the quantum spin liquid phase exists for a finite uh, J2 region. So this kind of cross-check is very important. And actually, uh, in future, uh, to review the phase diagram of, for example, the uh, doped Hubbard model. Actually, the cross-check among the various uh, variational method is very important. So given this uh, situation, a common metric of uh, variational accuracy is highly important. And uh, to construct a common metric of variational accuracy, uh, we recently performed uh, the international collaborations so if you are interested in, uh, please have a look at uh, this paper. Okay, so to summarize the first part, so the neural network quantum state, if properly constructed, it can give the uh, state of the accuracy. Then uh, we can study the interesting physics using the neural network quantum state. Okay, then uh, we move on to the second topic, and the extension to the uh, finite temperature simulations. So the finite temperature simulation is more challenging because we need to take into account the uh, thermal fluctuations on top of the uh, quantum fluctuations. But unfortunately for the two-dimensional uh, spin systems, uh, we do not have many uh, powerful methods for finite temperature simulations. Then uh, what we try to do is to propose a new method based on the uh, neural network. Then uh, we use the idea of the purifications. So in the purifications, the finite temperature density matrix is mapped onto the pure state of the extended systems. Then uh, if we trace out the ancilla degrees of freedom, we get back to the original uh, density matrix. Then uh, our idea is to represent the pure state of the extended systems by the Boltzmann machine like this. So here, sigma is the spin, system spins, and the sigma prime is the ancilla spins. Then the correlation among sigma and the sigma prime are taken into account by the connection to the hidden degrees of freedom. 
<coughs> then uh, if we trace out this uh, sigma prime ancillary degrees of freedom, then uh, we can simulate the finite temperature property of the original system. Okay, then uh, in this method, first we prepare, prepare the purified infinite temperature state. So now, for example, the uh, purified uh, infinite temperature state uh, can be prepared by uh, preparing, preparing the maximally entangled state between sigma and sigma prime spins, like this. And actually, this uh, infinite temperature state uh, can be exactly represented by the uh, Boltzmann machine with uh, a complex weight, i pi over 4, like this. So this is the initial state. Then uh, by starting from this uh, infinite temperature state, then what we do is the imaginary time Hamiltonian evolution. Then uh, we can study the uh, finite temperature state. Then uh, to uh, approximate this imaginary time Ham Hamiltonian evolutions, uh, we use the stochastic uh, reconfiguration method. So in the stochastic uh, reconfiguration method, uh, we try to uh, approximate uh, the exact imaginary time evolution as accurately as possible uh, within the representability of the variational ansatz. Okay, then uh, by using the stochastic uh, reconfiguration method, uh, we can approximate uh, the imaginary time Hamiltonian evolution. Then uh, we apply this uh, finite temperature method for the two-dimensional uh, J1, J2 model. So in the first part, uh, we study the zero temperature phase diagram of this model. But now uh, we study the finite temperature property of this model. So here we show the benchmark result using the six by six lattice. So here, uh, uh, this is the energy uh, specific heat and uh, structure factor, and this is temperature. And uh, we study two cases. One is unfrustrated case, J20, and the frustrated case, J2 is 0.5. And the symbols are our method, and the solid curves are the exact references. So by uh, comparing to the exact references, we see that our method uh, accurately reproduce the exact result. And actually, this exact result is obtained by a kind of Ranchos type uh, method, and then the computational, computational cost scales exponentially with respect to the system size, so we cannot go to the larger system size using the, this kind of Ranchos type method. But compared to that, our method case, uh, the computi computational cost is reduced to the polynomial with respect to the uh, system size. Then uh, by using our method, we can simulate a larger system size. Okay. Then uh, finally, we, we move on to the uh, quantum to classical mapping method. Okay, so far, uh, uh, we performed the approximation of uh, imaginary time Hamiltonian evolution uh, using the stochastic reconfiguration method. Again, uh, using the stochastic reconfiguration method, we try to approximate the exact evolution as accurately as possible within the representability of variational ansatz. And actually, we apply this kind of variational, variational type approach using the, uh, mainly using the shallow network like RBM. This is because uh, the optim numerical optim optimization of variational parameter is rather easy uh, for the shallow network. But what we found is that if we introduce the uh, deep neural network, like a deep Boltzmann machine, so here this is the structure of deep Boltzmann machine. So in the RBM, we only have sigma and H spins, uh, but compared to the RBM structure, we additionally have the uh, deep layer in this uh, deep Boltzmann machine. 
then the representability of the deep Boltzmann machine is much more flexible uh, than the shallow network of RBM. Then uh, what we found is that we can exactly and analytically uh, reproduce the short time, imaginary time Hamiltonian evolution using the deep Boltzmann machine. This is because we have much more flexible uh, representability compared to the RBM. <coughs> then uh, what we can do is first we prepare the initial state by the deep Boltzmann machine. Then uh, we apply uh, the imaginary time Hamiltonian evolutions and we apply the Suzuki Torota decomposition for that. Then uh, uh, we can reproduce this decomposed imaginary time evolution exactly uh, by the deep Boltzmann machine. So <coughs> then uh, in the uh, limit of long time imaginary time evolutions, then we can e eventually obtain the ground state. So here in this method, compared to the uh, stochastic reconfiguration method, where we do the numerical optimization of the variational parameters, we do not need to perform the numerical optimizations. We can uh, uh, do everything deterministic. Then this mapping is exact up to the Torota error. So let me show an example using the one-dimensional transverse field Ising model. So the Hamiltonian can be decomposed into the interaction part and the transverse field part. Then the pro problem is how to uh, uh, reproduce this short time propagator by the deep Boltzmann machine. Okay. <coughs> so for the uh, uh, interaction propagator, uh, what we do is to add one shallow degrees of freedom, then uh, put a new bond like this. Okay, so this is uh, already interesting because what this means is that to uh, reproduce the classical propagator, the shallow network is enough. We do not need the deep neural network. But on the other hand, uh, <coughs> to reproduce, to exactly reproduce the quantum propagator like a transverse field propagator, actually uh, the deep degrees of freedom play an important role. So in this case, by putting a uh, deep unit and a hit, uh, shallow unit, then uh, we can reproduce this uh, transverse field propagator. So now we have a method to reproduce uh, this uh, short time propagator. Then by uh, successfully applying this short time propagator, then uh, we can analytically construct the uh, deep Boltzmann machine, uh, which represents the ground state. Okay, so this is the constructed uh, deep Boltzmann machine. So again, we do not need to do the numerical optimization of the variational parameters. The, all the parameters uh, in this deep Boltzmann machine uh, can be determined by some analytical uh, formula. Okay. Then uh, number of uh, hidden and deep unit becomes proportional uh, to the system size and also the uh, imaginary time. Uh, length. Okay, then uh, once uh, this deep Boltzmann machine is constructed, uh, we can compute uh, the uh, physical quantities by uh, doing the Monte Carlo sampling of the uh, deep spins, hidden spins, and uh, uh, system spins of this uh, deep Boltzmann machine. Okay. So this uh, deep Boltzmann machine is a classical uh, Ising system. So this is a uh, uh, Ising uh, spin system. So uh, in this method, we map the quantum state to the classical Ising systems. So in, in this sense, uh, this uh, framework uh, provides a novel quantum to classical mapping. And actually, we can show that uh, this kind of mapping actually incorporate the path integral formalism. And in the specific construction, for example, in this case, actually this corresponds to the uh, path integral formalism. Then uh, actually the interesting point that is that now we can connect the concept of deep layer in the deep learning or the machine learning to the imaginary time direction in the statistical physics. 
So this kind of connection is kind of uh, interesting to me. Okay. Then uh, finally, we compare uh, this approach to the uh, variational approach. So this, uh, in this quantum to classical mapping, the good point is that we do not need to the uh, need to perform the numerical optimization of the variational parameters. All the parameters can be given deterministic way. But the problem is that for computing the physical quantities, actually we need to do the Monte Carlo sampling for the sigma spins and also the uh, hidden spins. Then uh, in this case, actually, as in other, uh, uh, similar to the case of pass integral, actually if we want to apply it to the uh, frustrated spin systems, actually uh, uh, the same problem uh, will occur uh, when we compute uh, the physical quantities. Then uh, due to the severe sign problems, we cannot apply this uh, quantum to classical mapping method to the frustrated spin systems. On the other hand, in the variational type approach, uh, the, we need to do the numerical optimization of the variational parameters, but we can apply to the uh, frustrated speed systems. So finally, as a side remark, uh, using this method, actually we can uh, exactly map the quantum circuit, quantum circuit to the deep Boltzmann machine. So it is well known that the quantum circuit can be represented by, represented by the tensor network, but actually uh, the quantum circuit can also be uh, represented by the deep Boltzmann machine. Okay, so this is the summary. So finally we talk on the, uh, talk on the quantum to classical mapping method. Uh, this is nice because we do not need to perform numerical optimization, but when we apply to the frustrated spin systems, the same problem will occur. Then uh, in this case, uh, using the variational method, we can study the zero temperature property and the finite temperature property of the frustrated spin systems. And this kind of topic is covered by this uh, review paper, so please have a look at this. Then uh, this is the final remark. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank you for your kind attention. Thanks a lot for the very clear presentation. We have time for questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a comment <coughs> related to the second part of the talk about the finite temperature computation. Uh, do you know what is the scaling with the system size of, with the volume of the system of the resources that you need to have in order to keep the accuracy fixed? Yeah, that, that is an uh, interesting point. But the problem is that for the finite temperature simulations, actually we do not have much reference to check the accuracy. I mean, in the ground state property, even when the uh, exact energy is not known, for example, the energy variance tell how close to the ground state but uh, when we want to apply to larger system size, my problem is how to define, how, how we do not know how good the method is because we do not reference. J2 equals zero? Uh, J2 equals zero, we can, uh, yeah, 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 we can have the quantum Monte Carlo. Uh, in that case, uh, for the moment, I do not study the system size uh, dependence of that, yeah, yeah. This comp yeah, I agree. This computational cost uh, depends on how large we need to introduce. I mean, number. Of it, this depends on the number of hidden unit. So, if we need to introduce much large number of hidden unit, then this uh, computational cost grows much more. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thanks for the talk. I would also have a question to the computational cost here in that case. So if you only have a polynomial cost compared to the exponential 
mm -hmm. so if say cost of like or, or like complexity also of quantum mechanics, right? You have to put the complexity somewhere in some knowledge about the state or in some knowledge about the system. So, so how do you achieve in in this simulation technique here basically that you can only have a polynomial cost, even though the the problem is still exponentially complex? Yeah. yeah. So, so again, uh, this uh, this kind of scaling is kind of for the moment it is heuristic, and uh, we do not have uh, I mean the background for this. Uh, I mean, even in the ground state uh, approximation, we do not know how large we need to introduce this hidden unit to reach the, the good accuracy, right? So, uh, yeah, the answer is we do not know the, the scaling, yeah, yeah. There's another question here. Hi, thank you very much for the nice talk and the nice results. Um, I have a question regarding the first part of the talk. Mm -hmm. uh, have you compared, or, or is it possible to pair these two uh, ideas also with other um, neural quantum states, like, I don't know, RNNs or so? Have, have you tried it, and is it an advancement or disadvantage? Yeah, I haven't tried, but it, it is possible. But I, I, have, I just do not have, I just, I haven't tried. Yeah, of course, we can think of other uh, architectures, and, uh, but so far we do not know the best architecture for the neural network, but this should be investigated in more detail, I think. In, in the last part of your talk, you mentioned this uh, uh, mapping to the path integral. Uh, so uh, so you, you mentioned, as, in the, as if I understood correctly, uh, you cannot avoid the sign problem, right? Uh, so how the sign problem manifest uh, in this mapping? I could not see. Uh. Yeah, actually, so, so let me start from this uh, to the variational method. In the variational method, we can just take uh, the wave function, uh, the square of the wave function amplitude as a weight. Then the, this is in principle positive. But uh, then uh, we only need to uh, sample the sigma spins or system spins. But uh, in this uh, case, actually we need to do the uh, Monte Carlo sampling also for the hidden degrees of freedom, not only the sigma spins. Then. Uh, Actually, when we apply to the frustrated spin systems, then this bond becomes complex. Then uh, if we uh, also do the Monte Carlo sampling for also for this auxiliary degrees of freedom, then the negative sign will appear. But for unfrustrated spin case, uh, the order bond here becomes real, and then uh, actually uh, the order weight becomes positive. Then in that case, as in the case of past integral, we can do the Monte Carlo sampling for that case. Uh, for the nice talk, um, I have a question about the last part of your talk when you mentioned that you can map quantum circuits to uh, the Boltzmann machines. Can you tell us a little bit more um, about um, basically what are advantages and what are disadvantages of, 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 of this approach and uh, um, when one could expect you know, the Boltzmann machine approach to work uh, better or to give some, something new? Yeah, actually, uh, for the moment, there is no advantage, unfortunately. There is no practical advantage. This is, uh, yeah, actually, so this is uh, kind of, for example, CZ gate. It is like a, a, not the imaginary time evolution, but this is a two-spin operator. Then uh, we can, using the same technique, so here we also apply to this kind of propagator working on the two spins. Then uh, by using the similar idea, we can uh, map to the deep Boltzmann machine, but unfortunately, even in this case, the uh, bond becomes complex. Then uh, uh, practically, there is no advantage, but if we can do some mapping, we can have a mapping to more compact network with a more shallow uh, net neural network, then um, without losing fidelity, then we may have some advantage, but for the moment there is no practical advantage for that. This is.
Yeah, yeah. So using the using the similar technique, we can also uh, perform the, uh, for example, real time uh, Hamiltonian evolution using uh, the same technique. But again, the uh, bond becomes complex in that case. Then the sign problem will, will appear. So for the moment, there is no pro practical advantage. Uh, thanks for the nice talk. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering, do you see any applicability or challenges of your RBM plus PP ansatz for fermions in the real space formulation? So, since it seems natural to describe superconductivity with that. Yeah, um, of, of course, the dopt Hubbard model is one target. Oh, I mean, this. yeah, but I mean, like, uh, if, you, if you look at electron gas type models uh -huh. or so 2D could materials. The continuous Electron gas means you mean the continuous. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. I haven't thought about that, but the, yeah, there are several ways to do that. First, we, uh, one way is, of course, we uh, introduce some uh, basis set, then we mapped onto the second quantization form, then we apply this, or, yeah, I need to think, but I, uh, I, 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 yeah, the answer is I need to think about how to okay. apply. All right, thank you. I mean, it seems like you could, you know, write your pair project wave function maybe with orbitals, and then mm. if you have orbitals, you could write it in real space, which, yeah, yeah. okay, thank you. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't, I do not have, as, as I said, I, I, I only have one member in my group, so, so please collaborate. <laughs> okay, maybe one last question, if there is. If not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much.